Alright guys, this is the last installment of the uh, how to paint your motorcycle at home step 4, or video 4, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to show you what you're going to need, you're going to, need to buy to do this part. It's a uh, wet sanding buffing and show you what to buy, how much it costs, where to get it from. Alright, first for do it, your, for, uh, do it yourself at home, you can use a drill. I have a DeWalt 20 volt doesn't really matter. Cord it's better so you don't wear it out. But you know, whatever you have. Then you're gonna need to get an arbor that goes into the drill and has a threaded end on it. For this, it's a velcro uh, a velcro uh, pad to hold your pads for your different compounds, wax, and uh, those sorts of things. This is a three stage system I'm going to be showing you. It's best to use a DA, but again this is for do it yourself at home so whatever you have lying around. Then you're going to need this arbor. Um, these are probably like five or six bucks, you can get them at any hardware store. And then you're going to need this. Uh, this I think is like five, in between five and ten bucks. Could be cheaper, try Harbor Freight. And now I'm going to show you the the three compounds, the, the three-step system. Actually, we'll start with the uh, start with the compound first, because compound is first. All right. So first, you're going to put your arbor and your pad holder into the drill. like such. Now each pad is different whether it's for your polish, your wax, or your compound. Again, this is the first one, Ultimate Compound. This McGuire stuff works really, really good. You can get it at Walmart. Each one of these kits come with one, comp like, uh, one compound and one pad, the pad you need, because there are three different pads. So you're going to need that, and then it comes with your pad. The pad simply just goes right on your gun like that and it holds firmly, doesn't go anywhere and that's it, well you have your compound polish and wax again these are 11 50th a pack so just say 12 bucks so $36 and it's more than enough to do your bike. Make sure you get all three, you'll get the best finish and it actually comes out really good. Um, next, what you're gonna need to do is get a bucket of some sort and fill it with water. Because we're only doing one part for this demonstration, I have a little bucket. Some people like to put dish soap in there. I, however, do not. Um, to me, when you put the dish soap in there, it suspends all the little pieces and this just dirt and debris in the liquid. And you don't want any of that on your sandpaper because if you go to sand, huh, you might scratch the shit out of it. Um, typically when you're clearing, a lot of clears call for three coats. If you're just starting off, I would suggest doing four coats. This way here, it gives you lead weight for when you wet sand and buff um, because it'll be that much thicker so if you mess up you don't got to worry about going too deep or not the finish isn't going to be too far off from doing the three coats um, your, your technical data sheet for your clear coat will tell you exactly how many coats is required again you could throw an extra, clear, uh, an extra coat on there just for safety purposes if it's your first, second, maybe third time um, what you're going to need, uh, depending on how bad your orange peel is, is uh, 600, uh, 1200, 1500, and 2000. I do it like that. You don't have to use all of them. If your orange peel isn't that bad or if you don't have any runs, you can jump right to like 1500 and then do a, do a scuff on that and then bring it to 2000 before you start your polishing. It all depends on how bad it is. 
Now, if you get a run or something in your first coat, well, you're kind of screwed. In your first coat of clear, you're kind of screwed because uh, you have to sand all the other coats off to get to that run. Now, if you get a run in, your, let's say, your third or fourth coat, you're good to go. It'll come out. No worries. So be very, very careful in your first and second coat of clear. Um, all right, let's get to a part. Start. Okay, I'm going to choose this part here because uh, it's kind of small, It'll be a quick little video. Although, these pieces, I did pretty good, they don't have very much orange peel on them at all. Damn near none, so I don't know how good I'll be able to show you. Now don't be scared, because when you do this, that shine is all gonna be gone. But yeah, I can't even pull up any orange peel on this, but once I sand it, you guys will see. It's, it's not perfect, but it's pretty damn close you would be able to see the high and low spots. So first thing what you want to do is get your sandpaper and you want to soak it in your bucket. Alright, you're going to put this in. Alright, get it done in there. I usually let it soak for five minutes or so. And then while you're soaking it, I like to get a microfiber towel. You can get these at AutoZone or Advanced Auto or even Walmart. This three pack was $6.99. You could probably find it cheaper. Um, while I'm waiting for that to soak, I like to take a terry cloth or not a terry cloth, a microfiber cloth, and then just clean off the part that you're about to do real well. So there's uh, nothing on there that can potentially scratch or damage the area that you're about to about to wet sand. Now when you're wet sanding now when you're wet sanding if you don't have to stay away from your edges okay unless you absolutely need to because you don't want it to to take the paint off which in the previous videos is why I like to wrap the paint around the edges so this way here because if you just paint the edge and you don't go underneath then the paint is on the edge there and you can easily scratch it off or sand it off or whatever so I like to go under the part with the paint and the clear coat so once that's cleared real good or prepped real good I'm sorry you um Go ahead and start sanding. This piece isn't bad, so I'm gonna go ahead and start with 1500. All right, now normally if this was a flat piece, you'd use a sanding block so you don't get any waves or anything, but this has got a lot of contours and it's shaped odd, so you want to, um, You know, it's, it'll be hard to use a sanding block. So what you do is you just gently, nice and easy, let the sandpaper do the work. Sand it down. Nice and easy through straight. Some people go in circles. I don't agree with that. I just like going straight. You know, here and there, dip your, dip your sandpaper. You know, it might make it easier on you to fold it over some. Now with this one here, I did the edges, I painted over the edges, so it's all good. I can go ahead and hit the edges. Like I said, just let the sandpaper do the work. You'll start seeing that your water is, you can see the clear, you can see the, the residue from the clear coat. Make sure you get in all your cracks and crevices. I'm going to try and do a half-assed job so you guys can see what I'm uh, referring to about your high and low spots. Like I said, if you have any runs or anything, you can go ahead and 
and start with a um, a heavier grit sandpaper. Okay, this actually worked out perfect. This is completely dry. As you can see, you can see the parts where I actually missed right there, right there. Those are still very shiny, okay? But now, down here, you can see the dimples. All right, you see how it's white? Or even look at it compared to the edge there. All right, the dark brown compared to your light brown. The light brown is the high spots, okay? The dark brown is where you want to go down to. You want it to be all uniform. All right, you want it all to be like this area right here. Nice and smooth. Okay? So obviously we have some sanding left and that literally was just came from what I just showed you guys. Maybe a minute of sanding. Doesn't take long at all. So you want those dimples out of there. All right? Right now it feels smooth as a baby's ass. And that was only 1200 grit or uh, 15, I'm sorry. So I'm going to go ahead and go with 15 again, real gentle just to bring it all to to look at least like this here, the dimply part and then I'll finish it off with 2000. Alright now for the most part we're about even just got to touch up the edge here a little bit it's like a bevel, no big deal but you can see how it's all almost uniform there the 2000 will bring it perfect, it's smoother than a baby's ass and that's 1200 you know there's a spot here a little bit there so we're going to touch that up and then it'll be ready. Alright, that's it. Uh, there's some wet spots. But it's all pretty much uniform. Everything, there's no more orange peel whatsoever. There's some wet spots. Those shiny spots are wet spots. When it's wet, it'll look like a glass finish. Alright, like I said, don't get scared at this part. You know, as long as you take your time and do it right, everything will be fine. Now we move on to side note comment. too is uh, these parts have been sitting for for days. Uh, I wouldn't recommend wet sanding and buffing for maybe 24 to 48 hours after you lay your clear coat down. Maybe you can do it sooner. You got to look at your TDS sheet, your technical data sheet. <laughs> Excuse me, I could be wrong, but um. I like to wait and let it cure as long as possible. You definitely shouldn't wax. I wouldn't wax for a few days. Now we're going to put our compound on. That's the first step. That's when you bring your part back to life. You start bringing it back to life, you start getting your shine back and all that fear goes away. Now remember, even after this, once it's all said and done and dry, this rag is a little damp now. I would recommend wiping it back down so there's nothing on there that could potentially scratch it anymore or do any damage or anything of that nature. Alright, now what I like to do is I put a few drops on my pad. Some people put it on there, whatever. I don't know if it really matters or not, but this is how I do it. And it works fine, so then I'll do that. Put a couple drops in there. And then uh I'll rub it into the piece, the item that I'm doing. Get it in there good. Rub it around. Again, this is where you start to see your item come back to life. And you don't really worry about losing your shine or it never coming back. The first time I did it, I was scared. I thought I was never getting it back. And then I like to use the edge of the pad. Alright, rather than the flat part. Now, when you're doing your edges, make sure on the side you're doing it's turning that way and not back this way because if you're coming this way it might peel the bottom off again I wrap the paint around so I don't have much to worry about but you don't gotta go crazy it's nice and easy and this this here will fill in all your little scuff and, and marks from your sandpaper 
It'll fill it up and make it look real nice. You might have to hold it, do whatever. Uh, you gotta be careful though. I don't know if you can see it in there, your shine's coming back. You see that? Again, this camera sucks, so it makes the colors look all jacked up. Okay, so the first step is done. As you can see, we got our shine back. What? Yeah, it's back. So now, we move on to the second phase. So I'm going to take this off. Such. Keep your pads together too because they are different. Next, we move on to the polish. Again, remember all your instructions are on the back. Follow them. If you follow them, you can't, can't fuck it up. You have a good finish. This already looks good. And uh, that was just polish. So, guess what? When we're done putting this on, it's gonna shine up real good. And then guess what? We wax. And then that's it. You're done. You did it all by yourself. You didn't have to pay somebody a shit ton of money. And then, you know, you wanna wipe the excess off once you're done with a uh, microfiber cloth. Oh, this is the exciting part. You know, it feels good when you do this stuff and you do it yourself because all these guys get a lot of money for this. Oops. That's another reason why you want to make sure it's on there good. So it don't fall off. I actually got to tighten that up. That's not right. So this kit is more than enough to do your whole bike and it's only like 30 36 bucks so let's see what this looks like when it's done all right the polish is done look at that <laughs> flawless there's not a mark anything in there no orange peel that's a showroom finish right there that's a a high quality showroom finish there's no dings no nothing you can see everything right you can eat off this thing it's perfect and people pay a lot of money for this a lot to have this this type of finish now the last and final process is the waxing the waxing is a little different because you want to apply the wax and here, let me let me read it off the uh, the directions so I can give you guys. It'll be easier for me to explain it to you. Now this you just don't put on. You got to put on, and there's dry times and stuff. It says apply small model product across the surface of the foam waxing pad, as we did. Place the waxing pad flat against the paint surface. Make two overlap passes working one section at a time. After three to five minutes, remove the uh, Supreme Shine, or I'm sorry, remove the wax with a microfiber towel. Um, turn to a clean portion of the towel for final wipe. So you want to put the wax on. <laughs> wax on. Uh, and then three to five minutes later, you know, go over it, uh, go over two overlap passes, two complete passes, let it sit for three to five minutes, then wipe it off with a fiber cloth or microfiber cloth. And then that's the final step. And this thing will bling. Not that it's not already, but you know, you're probably nervous when you're wet sanding, thinking I'll never get the shine back. But that son of a bitch comes back. All right. There it is. All done. That's what wax everything. Remember, make sure you wipe it off after three to five minutes, the excess. Now it's protected. It's nice and shiny. Showroom finish. Perfect. Remember, uh, follow all your steps, and you'll be good to go. All right, so uh, 
I hope this how to uh, these four how to videos really helped you guys you know maybe saved you guys some money in doing it at home by yourself or whatever the case may be you know if it did help and you did save some money make sure you uh, like it subscribe and if you guys have any questions feel free to comment I'll do whatever I can to get to them or you can email me at smcustoms14 at gmail.com and or you know if you guys want uh, your bike painted or done so you guys don't have to do it or don't want to spend the money on materials I have very reasonable prices very I understand what it's like to uh, not have the money to exactly pay somebody to do these sorts of things so I do what I can to help everybody so just keep that in mind um, yeah it's all about getting off your ass and not being lazy if, if you can do that you know it's not much to get off the ground and get started and do your own bikes maybe do somebody else's form uh, so yeah make sure you like and subscribe see you guys later